Uh, welcome back to this next video and uh, in this video we are going to talk about the uh, A kinase anchoring protein. Uh, in the last video we were discussing about the uh, protein kinase A and the uh, different types of the protein kinase A uh, based on the regulatory subunit and I've told you that uh, based on the regulatory subunit there are two types of the protein kinase A. One is known as the uh, type A protein kinase if you are using the uh, regulatory uh, type 1 subunits in the formation of the protein kinase A or you can actually have type 2 protein kinases if you are using the uh, R2 regulatory subunits uh, and you are utilizing them for the uh, formation of the protein kinase A so that was the uh, type, pro type 2 protein kinases. Now in this particular video I want to focus on uh, an important protein which is known as the A kinase anchoring protein. Now this uh, A kinase anchoring protein as the name indicate that these proteins they are anchoring proteins but these anchoring proteins they are for the protein kinase A. Now this uh, A kinase anchoring protein or for short they are known as the A cap these a cap they are actually bound to the cell membrane so i'm representing these uh, two lines for a cell membrane or it can be the membrane of any other organelle so what the a kinase anchoring protein is doing that it is going to uh, attach the uh, protein kinase uh, a uh, in this particular case the type 2 protein kinase a to the cell membrane of the cell or to any other membrane of the uh, organelle uh, if you talk about the uh, human beings, there are uh, nearly uh, 50 uh, A caps. There are 50 different types of the A kinase anchoring protein. And if you remember from the last video, I've told you that the uh, regulatory subunits, they are actually using their uh, docking and uh, dimerization domain for attachment to the uh, A kinase anchoring protein. So the uh, type 2 protein kinases, uh, as I've shown you, you over here in this particular case, the type 2 uh, protein kinases, the regulatory subunit type 2, they would be utilizing their docking and dimerization domain to interact with the A cap. Therefore, they will be indirectly attached to the cell membrane or the uh, membrane of any other organelle. Now, these uh, A caps or these A kinase anchoring protein, they actually uh, vary in localization and structure, uh, but they all share the ability to bind to the uh, regulatory subunits of the protein kinase A. So when the A kinase uh, or the A caps, the A kinase anchoring protein, when they vary in their localization and structure, they are actually targeting the uh, protein kinase A holoenzyme to different subcellular locations in proximity to other proteins to optimize the uh, signal transduction, uh, allowing for local cyclic AMP responsive events to occur within specific compartments of the cell. Uh, just for the uh, just as an example if you are uh, interested in the activity of the protein kinase a in the uh, endoplasmic reticulum so what the a caps they will be doing they will be localizing the protein kinase a to the endoplasmic reticulum and then they will be for, for the protein kinase a will be uh, interacting with those particular proteins which are needed for a specific function in the endoplasmic reticulum so the protein kinase a they are actually uh, localized to the uh, different subcellular level with the help of the uh, A kinase anchoring protein. Now, if you uh, look at the uh, reported literature or the uh, reported studies, what they say is that A kinase anchoring protein they preferentially associate with the uh, R2 subunits or the type 2 regulatory subunits. Uh, but there is no reason to believe that the regulatory subunit type 1 they can also be uh, compartmentalized through uh, interaction with the A caps but most of the reported studies say that the protein kinase A uh, which are having the regulatory type 2 subunits they are actually interacting with the uh, A kinase anchoring protein. Now, once you have um, activated the protein kinase A, uh, the adenyl cyclase and where the cyclic AMP, the cyclic AMP that have bound to the uh, regulatory subunit of the protein kinase A and the catalytic subunits have been released. So what are the function of the uh, catalytic subunits of the uh, protein kinase A then? 
Now, the uh, catalytic subunit of the protein kinase A, they are actually serine threonine kinases. What I mean by that is that the catalytic subunit of the protein kinase A, when they will interact with their uh, substrate protein, they are going to add a phosphate group on the serine or the uh, threonine residues in the substrate or the target protein. Now, one of the uh, important targets of the catalytic subunits of the protein kinase A, that is the glycogen synthase. Now, the glycogen synthase that actually exists in two forms. One is known as the glycogen synthase A and the other one is known as the glycogen synthase B. Now, the glycogen synthase A, that is actually the active form which is responsible for the uh, glycogen synthesis. But the glycogen synthase B is the inactive form. It means that if the glycogen synthase is present in the B form, it will not be able to uh, go for the uh, glycogen synthesis. So what the catalytic subunit are doing, that they are going to convert the glycogen synthase from the A into the B form and when it is converted from the A into the B form, it will get inactivated and this will prevent the glycogen synthesis. Now why this is important, this will be clear in a moment. Uh, the other important targets of the uh, protein kinase A catalytic subunits, that is the uh, phosphorylase kinase. What the catalytic subunits of the protein kinase A are doing that they are going to phosphorylate the uh, phosphorylase kinase or you can call this is the uh, uh, glycogen phosphorylase as well. So, no, no, this is a different protein. The phosphorylase kinase is a different protein. The glycogen phosphorylase, uh, that is a different protein. So you should not confuse the phosphorylase with this uh, phosphorylase. So this phosphorylase kinase is a different protein. The glycogen phosphorylase, that is a different protein. So what the catalytic subunit of the protein kinase A are doing, that they are going to phosphorylate the phosphorylase kinase and when it gets phosphorylated this particular phosphorylase kinase it gets activated now when the uh, phosphorylase kinase it gets activated the target for the phosphorylase kinase is another uh, protein which is the glycogen phosphorylase now just like the glycogen synthase the glycogen phosphorylase exists in two forms when it is in the A form, that is the active form of the glycogen phosphorylase. When the glycogen phosphorylase is in the B form, that is actually the uh, inactive form. Now what happens is when the phosphorylase kinase gets activated by the protein kinase A and it go for the uh, phosphorylation of the glycogen phosphorylase, it actually phosphorylates the glycogen phosphorylase B form at the serine 14. The serine which is present at position number 14 in the uh, primary sequence of the glycogen phosphorylase that gets phosphorylated by the phosphorylase kinase. When you phosphorylate the serine 14 of the glycogen phosphorylase B, you are actually converting the glycogen phosphorylase B uh, into the glycogen phosphorylase A. Or you can say you are moving from the inactive into the uh, active form. Now when the glycogen phosphorylase, it uh, gets converted from the B type into the A type, this glycogen phosphorylase is going to act on the glycogen which is present in the liver or in the muscles. So when the glycogen phosphorylase A, it acts on the glycogen, it goes for the uh, glycogenolysis which is actually the breakdown of the uh, glycogen and you are actually producing the glucose 1-phosphate from the glycogen and this glucose 1-phosphate is actually utilized as a source of energy to, to be utilized in the uh, fight or the flight response. So what you are doing is that the protein kinase A is going for the activation of the uh, phosphorylase kinase and the phosphorylase kinase is going for the conversion of the glycogen phosphorylase B into the A form and that A form is going to act on the glycogen to release the glucose 1-phosphate for the uh, provision of energy for the fight or the flight response. Now, if you talk about the uh, protein, there can be a variety of the serines. So, which of the serine or which of the threonine, they actually get phosphorylated by the catalytic subunit of the uh, protein kinase A. 
if you uh, if you remember the in the first video i told you about the consensus sequence which was actually the uh, amino acid sequence which was providing uh, a binding site and hence the phosphorylation sites for the uh, kinases so if you talk about the consensus sequence of the uh, catalytic subunit for the protein kinase a so if you have got a sequence like arginine arginine and then an X, so this X can be any amino acid, and then you have got a serine or threonine. So this particular sequence, if a serine is here, but that is preceded by the arginine, arginine, this X can be any amino acid. These are actually the serine or the threonine, which uh, gets phosphorylated by the catalytic subunit of the protein kinase A. Now, in some instances, the consensus sequence can be the arginine, lysine, the X can be any amino acid then a serine and threonine another can be the lysine arginine uh, x the serine or threonine and then you can actually have the lysine lysine x or the serine or threonine so uh, these uh, preceding amino acids they are actually providing a favorable site for the catalytic subunit of the protein kinase a so that the following serine or threonine that can actually get phosphorylated so if I uh, summarize the whole story that we discussed so far in the uh, last four videos, so the uh, epinephrine, which was the ligand that was actually binding to the uh, epinephrine receptor or the beta-2 adrenergic receptor, and the binding of the epinephrine to the uh, the receptor was actually responsible for the conversion of the GDP of the alpha subunit of the heterotrimeric protein into the alpha GTP. And when the alpha GTP uh, and that was formed, that was actually the uh, active form of the uh, alpha subunit. And the alpha GTP that was actually responsible for the uh, activation of the enzyme uh, adenylyl cyclase. So you are actually uh, activating the uh, alpha protein and then you are going for the activation of the uh, adenylyl cyclase. And if you remember, I told you the uh, function of the adenylyl cyclase was to convert the uh, ATP into the cyclic AMP in a reaction which was known as the uh, cyclase reaction. And this uh, cyclic AMP was then going to bind to uh, the uh, regulatory subunits of the uh, protein kinase A and when they bind to the regulatory subunits, the catalytic subunits that was actually free for their activity and the catalytic subunits, they were then going for the uh, activation of the uh, uh, activation of the uh, phosphorylase kinase. The phosphorylase kinase was going for the conversion of the glycogen phosphorylase B from the B, uh, the glycogen phosphorylase B into the glycogen phosphorylase A. And this glycogen phosphorylase A was actually acting on the glycogen to release the glucose 1-phosphate to provide energy for the fight or the flight response. Now, the uh, why are we actually going for the uh, phosphorylation or the uh, inactivation of the uh, glycogen synthase? Now this glycogen synthase is actually the enzyme when it is in the A form, it actually goes for the uh, glycogen synthesis. So if you are uh, going for the breakdown of the uh, glycogen with the help of the glycogen phosphorylase, that means you are actually increasing the blood glucose level. So if the glycogen synthase is in the active form, that will again convert the excess glucose uh, into the glycogen and that glucose will not be available for the energy. So at one side, you are going for the uh, breakdown of the glycogen and then you will be going for the uh, glycogen synthesis. So uh, that doesn't mean anything. So in the end, you will not not be able to withdraw energy from the glycogen breakdown so what you do is that when you go for the breakdown of the glycogen by the help of the glycogen phosphorylase a at the same time you are going for the inactivation of the glycogen synthase and if you inactivate the glycogen synthase by converting it into the b form that particular glucose will be uh, available for the energy to be utilized in the uh, fight and the flight response so uh, if you like the video, uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel, uh, hit the like button and share it with your friends.